How old is the Sith Emperor of the Old Republic? We aim to answer this very question along with a lot more as we go over the complete timeline of the Emperor's life. The version of me that you knew became too complacent, too distracted by mortal concerns, empires, wars, even a family. I have seen where that path led. I'm not so easily distracted now. Our Dark Lord was born on the world of Medrias in the year 5113 BBY with the name Tenebrae. Six years later, his force potential awakened. It was at this time that the young Sith Pureblood had overheard his father arguing with his mother over her infidelity. The young boy's reaction was to murder his so-called father and torture his mother to death. By the time he was 10 years old, he learned his true father was the Sith Lord known as Dramoth, ruler of his homeworld. However, Tenebrae had grown far more powerful than Dramoth already, so he forces him into submission and takes his place as ruler of Medrias. It was also in this year that Tenebrae adventured to Korriban and met with the current reigning Dark Lord of the Sith Empire, Mark Aragnos. He was recognised as a Sith Lord and granted the name Vitiate. Over the next 100 years, Vitiate strengthened his knowledge of the Force and even inspired many followers. Being one of the only Sith Lords to embrace hatred exclusively as the fueling factor of power, a traditional Sith would draw upon all of their emotions to gain power, such as fear, anger, jealousy. Vitiate believed in the full brute power of hatred alone. By the time of the Great Hyperspace War, Vitiate decided to stand back and not take part in their downfall. When the Sith lost the battle a year later, he summoned the most powerful Sith Lords to his homeworld, where he would betray them with a dark side ritual named the Taking. Along with slaughtering the former Sith Council, Vitiate had consumed all life on his homeworld, causing the most devastating dark side nexus the galaxy has ever seen. He consumed more than 8,000 Sith Lords that day, extending his life for centuries or even longer. Almost 20 years later, Vitiate discovers Drummond Cars and begins to rebuild the Sith Empire in exile. Here, he creates a new Dark Council, and this is possibly where the title Darth was created in Legends. For just over a millennia, the Sith Emperor remained in hiding, but for the first time he decided to probe the Republic's defences. Rather than attack with his own army, he manipulated the Mandalorians into attacking the Republic, sparking the Mandalorian Wars. Sixteen years later, the Mandalorians are defeated by Revan and his followers. After their victory, Revan and Malak sought out a dark disturbance which eventually led them to the Sith Emperor on Dromund Kars. He had called to them from across the galaxy, sensing their strength. Revan and Malak discover the Emperor, but he corrupts them and makes them Dark Lords. He then sends them back to attack the Republic, with information on Rakatan technology, which then leads to the events of Knights of the Old Republic 1. Ten years later brings us to the events of the Revan novel. Revan once again confronts the Emperor alongside Mitra Surik the Exile and Lord Scourge. However, due to a vision Lord Scourge had, he decided to betray Revan, leading to his capture and imprisonment. The Emperor kept Revan in a stasis field within the Maelstrom prison for the next 300 years. Its location was top secret, known only to the Emperor's loyal servants. Now, the Sith Emperor is a mysterious individual. We know now that he inscribed a powerful ritual into his flesh, which would allow him to retreat into his original body like a backup save file if he should ever be defeated. Exactly when on the timeline this happens is unclear, however I believe that we have a few clues that help us narrow it down. The first clue is that Darth Maar himself commented on this very question, and had this to say about it. Do you know how long ago this impression of Tenebrae was made? I can only theorize, but it must have been long before our time. Likely before even Revan's time. This could be the story telling us that this happened before Revan's time, or it could just be speculation. But I think it's more than that. I firmly believe the writers intentionally had Darth Ma say this, to help make Lord Scourge's decision in the Revan novel make more sense. 
If the Emperor had this backup in place when Revan faced him in combat, then it's likely they would have lost and chaos would erupt. Therefore, I believe it makes the most sense for us to place this moment in time before Revan ever encountered the Emperor. This could be anywhere between 4999 BBY and 3950 BBY. It is also possible that around this time the Emperor discovered Zakul and the Eternal Fleet. He spends an unknown amount of time building a new civilization and conquering many worlds within wild space. He does this with a new human host named Valkorion. Due to the superior technology salvaged from Iokath, they were able to avoid detection from the larger galaxy. Within the game's lore, we discover that the Eternal Fleet has been active for at least 100 years since it's been in Valkorion's possession, meaning he discovered Zakul and split himself into Valkorion at the very earliest of 3736 BBY. In the year of 3681 BBY, the Sith Emperor and the resurgent Sith Empire attack the Republic and Jedi for revenge, as seen in the Return trailer. 28 years later, the Empire wins the war and the peace treaty is signed. Did you know that while Revan was in prison, he had a mental link and bond with the Emperor? Using this link, Revan was able to manipulate the Emperor into accepting a peace treaty essentially bringing an end to the war without even being there. Ten years or so later, the Emperor is trapped on Vos due to Darth Barriss' lies. After being freed, the Emperor sends a Sith to infiltrate the entity Selmakor and cause another world's end as revenge, but the attack was stopped by the Jedi Knight storyline. One year later, the Emperor is defeated on Droman Kars by the Jedi Knight and Scourge's vision begins to come true. The Emperor did not die here. The body he possessed was merely destroyed while his essence fled to Yavin 4 to recuperate. For three years, the galaxy believes the Emperor to be dead, until Revan and his followers knowingly fueled his return. His presence makes itself known on Yavin 4 and then immediately leaves. The next year, the Emperor's presence became known again as he takes over Xyost and eventually consumes it. In this same year, Darth Ma and the player character find the Eternal Fleet and are brought before Valkorion. This is where his secret empire becomes a secret no longer. Six years later, after great struggle and conflict, Valkorion is finally defeated within the Holocron found within his own personal vault on Nathema. Another fun fact for you, the world of Medrias, the Emperor's homeworld, was actually renamed to Nathema after his ritual. Moving on. Three years later, Lord Scourge reveals that the Emperor had an original body in stasis. This is the backup save file he made many, many years ago. Tenebrae's return and final defeat happen within the mindscape of Satil Shan, meaning the Emperor died, officially and for good, at the age of 1486 years old, making him the longest reigning Sith Lord to ever exist. If you want to learn even more about the Sith Emperor, then be sure to check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching this one. Remember to subscribe, and may the Force be with you.